start the session now. This is um, the first part of a multiplier event, which is going to take the form of a workshop. We're doing now and then after like 3.15 on um, the question of uh, micro-credentials and uh, if you like the search for an appropriate format for different uh, types of uh, um, certificates and credentials that people can get doing um, different forms of learning. Because um, traditionally, we've had the university model with the, the paper-based certificates, and they really aren't appropriate anymore. Because most people will be doing different forms of uh, learning at some stage in their life, maybe as part of a lifelong learning um, experience, and we'll be building up into like a portfolio of these uh, different kinds of credentials. So therefore, we need to actually reflect upon the best way of actually uh, storing these in such a way that, if you like, when we're applying for jobs or moving to a new institution, we've actually got something is easy for us to, to, to present electronically. So, if you like, the idea for this particular session is to have three presentations of maybe 10 to 15 minutes, and then we'll do an interactive exercise, if you like, reflecting on three different examples of um, existing types of uh, certificates. We can actually think about the sorts of problems there would be in, in actually representing these in some kind of uh, learning pass or Okay, so uh, without uh, more to do, I'll pass the pass it to my colleague um, Wolf Edwards, who will give us the, the first uh, presentation contextualizing the, the problem we're trying to solve. Yeah, so welcome from my side as well. My name is Wolf Edwards. I'm working in Germany as a professor for education management. And um, in Sweden, I'm already a long time in, and we are always discussing here how to move these old tankers of educational institutions into a zone where they can lead this revolution of society which we need. Uh, at least that's how we discuss it. And there's one particular issue which we uh, often use, one particular place where we say that's actually where we have to start and that's this issue of certification. And, we, and, 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 and once I was participating in a conference and um, the, the presenter, she, she suggested a thought experiment. A thought experiment and that was the suggestion to try to think higher education without assessments, without grades, without certificates. What happens? So, a very, very interesting way to go. And what we are doing actually in this uh, project, which is the underlying structure, the underlying, uh, so to speak, reason to, to have this meeting today, uh, which is called OE Pass, uh, is to think about uh, credentials, to think about certification from a certain angle, which we would like to introduce. Um, the workshop flows, uh, like Tim said already, it's, it's a little bit like uh, we have a presentation in the beginning now uh, by me to introduce you a little bit to the, to the topics, to the themes. Uh, then we will have a following uh, uh, presentation uh, by Anthony Camilleri, who is sitting here over here. Uh, and um, he will go into certain aspects of this issue. And then we will have an interactive part uh, led by uh, Florian and Robert and by Anthony Camilleri sitting here. Also other people here from the project, from the initiative are here on board, so that you anyway have an interesting let's say, uh, possibility to get also into depth uh, discussions uh, uh, about this. So, let's start with this. The current credentialing ecosystem, ecosystem, credentialing ecosystem, uh, when I started with this initiative, I was, first, it was a big step for me to, to start to, to, to think about that, that there is a credentialing ecosystem. But if you think about that, that's really true. With the Bologna process, we have a certain standardized way of thinking about education, higher education, uh, or, uh, or certification. We have bachelor system, we have master systems, and so on. So the current credentialing ecosystem developed over time. It's rooted in our nation's tradition, in our European tradition, maybe developed over time to meet the needs of society and its economic structures. Which all, in which often, and that was also the case when I started uh, my academic career, often a single credential served an individual well for a stable career over life. And this I cannot say for me because uh, it's not over yet. But um, that is the situation. 
Now, today's economy and society depend on ever higher levels of knowledge and the ability to rapidly evolve and adapt to changing circumstances. This is the talk which we are having always. I think this is nothing really groundbreaking new for everybody here around the table. Credentials have pro pro proliferated to meet the needs of the diverse 21st century knowledge economy. But how can we think about that? Yeah. Higher education credentialing, some examples. Um, for example, in 2015, Ernest and Young were, uh, were let's say, um, now we have some more participants, that's great, welcome. Uh, in, in 2015, Ernest and Young were announcing that in their view, when they are doing recruiting processes, um, they don't think that degrees, traditional degrees, have a predictive value anymore. Mm -hmm. So if you come with your bachelor degree to a recruitment assessment, that would mean they would say, okay, that's fine, but what can you do for us? You know, they, they would say, this, everybody has a bachelor degree. So what, how do you differentiate yourself? So what, what does it mean, actually? I mean, that's Ernest and Young, and there are many, many others. Uh, but um, there's a certain, let's say, movement in the OECD is writing in 2016 that uh, what we are focusing on today in our education, in our higher education programs, might not be enough for the future. What needs to be developed is more creativity, decision making, perspective taking, responsibility taking, and so on and so on and so on. Okay? But are these things on our certificates if Ernest and Young looks for them? No, they are not. So there might be something uh, to be done. Uh, another report, very interesting, has a, a totally different message. It's a burning glass report from 2014, from the US. And they, are, they, they said, um, it's not just that credentials, the credential system is shifting. Uh, we also we have a tendency to higher and more academization. So the, the up-credentialing movement, so to speak. So what you can see here is a landscape of traditional ways of thinking about certification of higher education uh, achievements is somehow under pressure, tectonic shifts are going on. Some believe they are not of value anymore, others believe everybody has to have higher education. And so this is a very, very interesting report, by the way, there's lots of statistics in there to prove this gap which they, they, they call the credential gap. Uh, I don't go into details. Um, another interesting, let's say, thought piece, you can say, it's called a manifesto for college leaders from the US uh, uh, from 2013, is talking about uh, not the, the systems, the, the, let's say, the higher education system, it's talking about post-traditional learners, uh, post-traditional learners. So these are learners which are growing in numbers more and more and more and more. Most traditional learners are learners which are coming to higher education after their family phase, uh, for a second job uh, 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 career, uh, and so on and so on and so on. They are adult learners. <laughs> so so most traditional learners have a different demand for higher education which differs in one thing for sure, maybe in other things as well, for, for sure in one thing, and that they might not need big block bachelor certifications or big block master certifications. They might need something for upskilling, reskilling, uh, whatever, small things, you know. So, but how are they credentialized, these small things? Do we, we don't really have a tradition for that, you know. It's so, the diversity of credentials, which is now actually evolving around this whole issue, which is on the, on the scene since five years, yeah? the whole diversity of credentials is not always meeting the needs of students, educational institutions and employers, that's the problem. There is a lack of shared understanding about what makes credentials valuable. And Today, I, I can tell you, if I would put all my credentials on, on a website, for example, and list them there and PDF them and, and put them there for download, I'm not sure if uh, 
if an employee, if I would apply, understands what that is, because it's non-standardized, uh, it's from all over, you know, uh, and I don't even have a bachelor degree, it's a problem, you know, I, I, have a, I have made my degree before the bachelor, so somebody understanding these kind of issues today, so that's, that's a problem. There's a lack of shared understanding about what makes credentials valuable, so what makes credentials valuable, how that value varies across different types of credentials, um, for different stickers, what constitutes quality also, yeah? What, what is a quality credential? When, when do I have to take it serious and when not so, so much serious, maybe? Also a problem. Um, and how credentials are connected to each other. We are building, we have built our higher education system on <coughs> the reputation idea, on the peer, peer, so to speak, perspective, yeah? If you have a have a degree from a from a higher education institution uh, uh, like Harvard or Stanford, Princeton, whatever, uh, 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 with a high reputation, maybe people don't even look at your at your, at your grade, yeah? but they say, oh, that, that's good. Yeah? But in times of mass higher education, where the OECD is prognosticing 70 percent plus in developed countries, in uh, let's say developed economies, they say actually not countries developed economies in the future 15 years, that means everybody is going to higher to higher education for everything, you know, for uh, being a physiotherapist and so on. You, you, you go to higher education institutions today, at least in my country. So that's uh, the situation. If you look at who are the stakeholders there, the students, they don't always have reliable ways to compare credentials with regard to what they include, their market value, their transferability, their relationships. This issue of transferability is a very, very important one. If you earn a credential from an institution, can you be sure that you can use this credential if you want to continue your education at a different institution? Something we will talk about today in the practice part of the workshop. Educational institutions, like university, for example, Educational institutions need well-defined information about the value of their credentials for employment, career advancement, civic engagement, uh, and so on. And of course, the employers, in the end, the, the labor market, uh, needs to understand what's the value, what's the value of these credentials that are coming there. Uh, they have difficulties often in understanding the competencies, potential degrees may or may not have, you know. I once was sitting together in, in, in a council where I'm, I'm, I'm a member of, uh, of our university where there are uh, employers and uh, university uh, stakeholders and the employers when we discussed uh, a, new, a new degree <laughs> which she wanted to make, they said, come on, this is so specific, yeah? I don't even know what this student is able to achieve and, and to be able to do in the end, you know. I want a general, understandable, bachelor degree where I know somebody can do this and that, and if I need a specific, so to speak, add-on to that, I will take care of that myself. You don't need to do that as a university. And he was talking against this, you know, crazy, sometimes crazy, I don't know, also, differentiation, you know, of bachelor degrees into branches and sub-branches and so on, and. Uh, more, 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 more special. So employers don't understand often uh, things. That's why we are in this situation, and that's also the underlying rationale why we created this initiative called OE Pass. Okay, Open Education Passport. Yeah? That's the idea, where we say we would like to develop an infrastructure in which learners can document what they have learned, so that it is. Um, understandable, that it is um, very verifiable, uh, and that, they, that, that we have an infrastructure in Europe uh, where we can rely on that these things are taken uh, serious and uh, can be taken into account. So that's the initiative. Our mission includes all these things, enhancing the portability of credentials, informing students about decision making, uh, providing context for educational institutions to make appropriate investments and so on. That's the underlying, let's say, uh, 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 point. Now let's take a closer look at credentials uh, again. 
what is a credential action? That's, that was our question in the beginning. And uh, as a professor of education management, I thought uh, we can skip this step because that's easy, but it's not. It's a very diverse world uh, out there uh, with credentials, uh, we found out. Um, and uh, a first definition which we used was this one, a documented award, so a credential is a documented award uh, by a responsible and authorized body that has determined that an individual has achieved, achieved specific learning outcomes relative to a given standard. So you can see here that um, although I was in my, let's say, talk up to now discussing um, about learning in a very free way, you can see that from the district definition which we are using, we are not including everything of learning into this credential, into this project. Uh, because, of course, you can, you know, from your yoga teacher, you can have a certificate of learning, which is uh, of <coughs> you as well. Uh, but if we would include, uh, include all these informal and non-formal, so to speak, uh, parts as well, um, uh, then it's a myriad of things, and it's, so to speak, the first step now for us to, to have a look uh, at credentials which are um, recognized and, uh, so to speak, awarded by a recognized uh, um, uh, education institution. Credential is still an umbrella term that includes degrees, diplomas, licenses, certifications, badges, and professional industry certificates. So you see already that's quite a broad range of things which, which come together there. Um, in a bit more generic fashion, we were then phrasing this um, definition. Uh, a credential in its most essential form is a statement awarded from one party to another describing the latter's qualities. Credentials are used for the purpose of providing uh, to a third party that the holder qualifies for something. So that's a more generic, uh, so to speak, uh, uh, setup. Here. Some examples of credentials, maybe I know this is very text heavy. Some examples of uh, credentials, see them at all. Credentials can be formal qualifications, of course, that's clear. I mean, uh, your bachelor degree, for example. Uh, so, uh, excuse me for the, for the small. Uh, awards at the end of a formal learning experience after completion of an assessment. Okay, that's the formal, for example, a degree or professional certification. So that's the one one type uh, of, of uh, credentials. Also, credentials can be a recognition of a competence you are having or a skill you are having. Okay? So awards recognizing a person has achieved specific defined skills after an assessment. So that's always in the, in the discussion around credentials, it's always important to base a credential on, on evidence, not just say, I have worked some time in wherever else, and, and that's why I am a good project manager, but to, to base it on some kind of evidence. And uh, that's why we are uh, suggesting here always an assessment. Somehow it needs to be assessed. Uh, for example, that could be a language proficiency exam, recognizing uh, recognition of non-formal learning. Then we also have records of experience, of course, awards recognizing the completion of experiences, the example I just gave, um, or social recommendations, endorsements by third party, what LinkedIn is doing, for example. For example, just in LinkedIn you have your um, professional biography and others can uh, endorse you for skills in LinkedIn. Is everybody on LinkedIn here actually? Okay. Um, <coughs> identity. Did you already endorse everybody? Yeah, you, <laughs> <laughs> you can go and endorse my credentials. No. <laughs> or not, if you don't think that's good. <laughs> credentials can be also identity records. Uh, records that prove identity within a special, uh, uh, specific given context. So these are uh, different types of credentials we are, we are also looking at. And then there is another issue which makes it clear why it is so important. And that is that if we are going into that direction, and I hope that I have at least, let's say, plausibly 
uh, managed to argue for them, that uh, we are, uh, so to speak, moving away from the big building block credential systems into a small, experienced, still maybe assessed, but small, experienced, uh, based credentialing system of skills and competencies, then the question is how can you combine them with each other? Yeah. Everybody knows in order to have a to, to, to go for a master degree, you have to have a bachelor degree. Yeah. That's clear. That's the combination we have so far. The pathway is clearly laid out in, in, in Europe and other countries. For credentials, the question is how do we do that? And there are now initiatives actually um, developing which think about stacking and connecting credentials. Stacking is this typical one on top of the other, and connecting can be, so to speak, compiling different things, uh, maybe not on top but next to each other. Uh, and there are now frameworks uh, developing in the US since some years, in Europe now with our uh, work uh, a bit more recently, um, uh, which think about how to do that actually. One framework from the US I uh, found, which I found quite interesting, uh, is this one uh, where you, where they think it in, in, in three, so to speak, phases. First phase is um, education and trend, uh, uh, or three, let's say, phases is around one, three focus. Um, the first one is that uh, education and training credentials and support services uh, need to be well connected and uh, transparent. Um, that you also need to have multiple entry points into education. So that um, <laughs> so, so that that that's what we do today. For example, in all um, in, in the legislation in the higher education acts in Germany, uh, you usually it's just one example. Um, you usually have an, uh, uh, formulated an opportunity to be bring in recognized prior experiences into a higher education pathway. So, so this is uh, one example for an entry point where you can bring your credentials into an existing uh, degree structure. So to speak. And then the third one is of course also multiple exit points. You don't need to have the whole bachelor degree in order to 